Hello everybody, this is Silver Dragon from CubeTubers.com and this is my quick start guide of Dwarf Fortress. Yes, Dwarf Fortress! It's a game that I've uh, personally been addicted to over the past month or so, quite a bit, and that recently a far more uh, of our actual staff have also been getting addicted to it. And uh, I figured I'd, to help them along and others as well, I'd make my own uh, little quick start guide. Uh, for Dwarf Fortress. So anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, go on Google and search up the Lazy Noob Pack right here. The Lazy Noob Pack. Uh, this has the game Dwarf Fortress. It has the, all the uh, graphics packs. It has the utilities. It pre it's pretty much your one-stop sh shop for everything Dwarf Fortress. Uh, another suggestion I would say would be to uh, open up the Dwarf Fortress wiki while you're playing. And in case you happen to have any questions, it's a quick uh, way to figure out if you have what what's the solution to any of your issues and so on and so forth. Now, once you download the Lazy New Pack, you want to uh, unpack it and whatnot, you'll be able to launch this file right here. And uh, right here we have a bunch of options, but first things first, you want to go to the graphics. We're going to want to pick one of these uh, four packs. There's the default pack, which is just Dwarf Fortress as it is, uh, the Iron Hand pack, the Mayday pack, and the Phobius pack. I personally prefer the Phobius pack, so I'm going to click that one, install graphics. Okay, if I had any saved files, it would be overriding it. Don't have any, but it'll be fine anyway. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the utilities. Now, the first one here... That we, there's only two of these you really want to pay attention to right now, and that's Dwarf Therapist and Sound Sense. Now, Dwarf Therapist, if we launch that program right now, take a second to pop up. There we go. Now, this will allow us to uh, give our dwarves jobs, and it makes it uh, far, far easier and simpler to have this little spreadsheet we can work with. Uh, it's, it's a really simple tool, and I'll uh, explain more about it once we actually launch the game. For now, I'm going to close that. And the second program, SoundSense, adds a lot more uh, sounds and music uh, sound effects to the game. Now, when you launch it, you'll get this little window. It'll do a configure check and whatnot, and then you'll get a second window. Now, uh, once this window pops up, you're going to want to go to Sound Pack Update and click the Start Automatic Update button. Now, I've already done this, so it's not going to take long to update, and then I'll have to do a quick restart of it. Uh, I, li I typically like to have this launched before you actually launch the game. It's a good idea just so that it will uh, work properly without any uh, hitches. Now, yep, done scanning packs, downloading, it doesn't really need to download anything, as it's already downloaded everything, and then done. Restart SoundSense, so I'll close that, rerun the program, it pops up, and then you just have to just lower it. You don't really have to have it up in your face or anything. All right, we do have the advanced if uh, settings here as well. We can enable or disable the FPS counter. Uh, you can disable the start startup intro movie, whether you want the game windowed, which is definitely what I suggest as well. Uh, auto saves, if you want to auto save uh, when the seasons come around and whatnot, you can set that up. Auto backup, same thing. When it auto saves, it will save a backup in case something goes wrong. Uh, but that's just part of Dwarf Fortress. So you got to take the risks with the uh, with the fun. Now, going back to the main options, I want to lower the child cap to 10, as uh, children take a long time to grow up and they're not that useful right now. So we'll just 10 to 1,000. And I want to turn off aquifers as they are evil little creations that uh, can make you really hard for an early player. Alright, and that's pretty much everything we want to set up for now, so let's uh, click Play Dwarf Fortress, and it will launch the game. You can already hear that beloved, lovely sounding music in the background. Let me resize this guy a bit so you can see it properly. Alright, a little bit, a little bit more. A little bit too much. Perfect. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a new world. So we're going to enter on Create New World. Uh, this is an alpha. Please leave any information, any bugs you find on the forums, so on and so forth. Anyway, we're going to start off with a large world. Uh, it has a short history, a medium number of civilizations. Uh, I'll say high number of sites and very everywhere a mineral occurrence. So that there's uh, minerals everywhere. We're just drowning in minerals. All right. I'm going to hit Y to go, and it will start rendering our map for us. It's rendering all the rivers, the lakes, forming lakes. There we go. Rivers and lakes are done. It's doing the minerals now. It's spreading the material or the minerals all around the underground of the world and whatnot. But yeah, this is a really complex and uh, awesome game. It's really captured uh, my soul, as it were. My soul to Amok. But anyway, oh, I love this song too. Ooh, 
So I'm not going to let this history go for very long. I'm just going to cut it off at about 80 so we can get this started. Don't have to wait for very long. But typically you could just put on short, with a short history you could just wait for it to get to like 100 and then just call it at that. But I'm going to cut it a bit short. Uh, see, so yeah, I right about now, 78 years of history or so. Yeah, 80 years of history around the dot, perfect. Now I could hit uh, A for uh, to abort this entire operation. Uh, I could hit C to continue it, or U to use the world as it currently exists, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to hit U. Uh, I can export an image, do all this stuff, and I'm going to accept the world as it is by hitting enter. And now it'll save the world. Ah, I love this song. Village of Dwarves. <laughs> ah, I love it. Alright, so the world will be saved right about now. It's synchronizing the folders, getting everything set up properly, and then we can start. And right about sometime next Tuesday, maybe. There we go. Alright, now we got Start Playing that just popped up, so we're going to click on that. Now, there are three different modes to Dwarf Fortress. There's the Legends mode, which basically just tells you the story of the world you just created, all the legends in it, uh, any historical figures, sites, forgotten beasts, dragons, stuff like that. You can all find in a bunch of information about them in their lives here. Vampires. Adventure mode is you and your one dwarf uh, adventuring around the world, trying to raise your fame and just... Spread your spread your legend across the land. Uh, but the main mode we're going to be looking at right now is Dwarf Fortress mode, which is where you take your seven dwarves, you embark off to an area, and you try and build yourself a fortress and civilization. So I'm going to hit enter on that right now. Now, I could make my... Uh, oh, wait, we got to start off with the map first. Here we go. Now you have three different uh, parts to this map here, or I should say a couple different parts. Right here we have the area we're in. It's a mountainous area. Temperature is temperate. We have no trees, which isn't that good. We need... Heavily forested trees, as we uh, want for our basic start. Other vegetation is pretty good. Surroundings are good. Wilderness is a nice surrounding. Uh, shallow metals, deep metals. If we're, if we're to be have a really good uh, embark, you need shallow metals, deep metals, flux stone, and any. Maybe you can find some extra soil and stuff for that as well. That's pretty good. But anyway, uh, right here we have the world map, which shows us the entire world. Uh, we have the area map, which shows us the uh, area we're currently selected in that world. And then the uh, embark map, which shows us uh, where we can embark in that area. Anyway, I'm going to look around here now and see what I can find, if I can actually find some flux stone. I've been very unlucky finding any flux stone. Might just be the updated thing. We'll have to see. All right. I might just uh, find some random embark and just go for it, just to show you how to set up. But typically, you would want to look around for quite a while until you have found all of those. Let's see, shallow metals, deep metals... Not really finding anything. So I'll just, I'll probably just go with this right over here. Shallow metals, deep metals, some soil. Let's see, you know, need to find some good tree cover as well. Savannah. Oh, that's cool. All right, shallow metals, clay, a little bit of soil. Ah, this area doesn't look too bad. It's a uh, woodland. It's not exactly heavily forested, like I would like. But ah, well, let's take a one last quick look around here and see what I can find. Sparse trees, sparse trees. Woodland. Here we go, heavily forested, it's got uh, shallow metals, deep metals, little soil, and some clay. Alright, so I'm going to, you can also, in the uh, embark area here, you can use the U, M, K, and H keys to move your embark around. I want to put the uh, river here into my embark a bit, so that I can uh, take advantage of that. Now if I hit tab, I can see uh, who my neighbors are. So we have dwarves, elves, goblins, and humans, that's good. All the civilizations, relative elevation, we can see here the cliff indicator, so that's pretty good. And uh, we can see the surroundings here are calm, so that's good. We won't really be getting much uh, attacked much here. So this is a pretty good embark. I'm going to embark here. I'm going to hit E to embark. You know, warning, this is your only warning. Do you want to embark here? Yes. And uh, I could make my own personal setup of seven dwarves and add, them, add their own skills and everything. But for convenience-wise, I'm just going to use the uh, one down at the bottom here. It has two miners, a mason, a woodcutter. A uh, carpenter slash crafter, a brewer, and a hunter. Alright, preparations were not completed, so we're going to hit escape. 
And uh, there were certain problems. We're going to hit P. There's no caves, uh, cave lobster or oaken buckets. Okay, so that's the issue. Escape. All right, so let me scroll this. And, of course, the scroll wheel can uh, change the size of the screen, as you can see here. All right, now we could uh, scroll through here and add more points to my dwarves if I had uh, the ability to, but I really don't with this. Oh, he's really a general car or crafter, isn't he? Hmm, a carpenter. That's pretty good. All right, now we want to go to the items page by hitting tab, which will take us to our items. Now, if we had uh, early steel industry, I would like to take this iron anvil with me, but for now, I'm going to remove it with the uh, minus key and uh, spread its points elsewhere. As you can see, for pets-wise, we have two dogs, a hunting dog, two cats for breeding, and we also have four chick or yeah, four hens, a rooster, two duck or a duck and a drake. These are going to be laying a lot of eggs for us, so we're going to have to uh, bring some nest boxes with us. Uh, but before that, we're going to want to make some more plump helmets, bring some more plump helmets, and bring some a lot more uh, tail pigtail seeds. As with the new update to Dwarf Fortress. You actually have to make and make a prosperous uh, clothing uh, factory, as it were, or a clothing workshop. You need to get it set up pretty soon and get some clothing, extra clothing for your dwarves, because they're actually going to use clothing now properly and whatnot. So we do need to get that set up, but not for right now. Now the bucket, we could have bring a bucket as well if we needed to make a well inside uh, pretty quickly, but usually it would take a while to make that and. We don't really need it right off the bat anyway, but we do need those nest boxes. So I'm going to hit N to add new item, and then it would scroll through, but that's better to go to the bottom. It's right in uh, tools here. Now it looks like we have iron nest boxes. Uh, I don't want those. I want the copper nest boxes because they're a lot cheaper. Bring about four of them with me. That should be good. All right, now we got a lot of extra points. I'm going to add another 10 copper bolts to my uh, hunter so he can run around and hunt a lot. And then the rest I'm going to put into... Actually, I'm going to reduce that by 5. And put it into uh, Dwarven Wine, because Dwarves are only really happy when they're drunk on the job, as it were. So we really need to provide them with a lot of wine. Uh, now, if we go back to the Dwarves, you could actually name them as well. It would uh, help distinguish them between the other Dwarves, like uh, by hitting C... Uh, customize an N for nickname and name him, oh, Dwarf Bob, as a tour. He is the mighty Dwarf Bob, expedition leader. Uh, but anyway, that should be good for now, so we can just move things along. I'm going to embark as that, but uh, if you do pick this setting, do not forget to bring the nest boxes with you. They are not there in there automatically, and you do need them, otherwise they will not lay eggs. And those eggs are going to be your primary source of food to begin with, even though we're going to set up farms and get stuff ready uh, right off the bat. But anyway, let us embark. We hit E, and we will head off to the uh, new area. Yay! Ah, the booze. And it looks like it is winter. Now, as you can see, once we get here, we have three different windows uh, staring us in our face. Uh, over here, we have the area window. We have the, uh, in the middle, we have the uh, commands window. And on the left, we have the view window. Now, you can hit tab to cycle through these as much as you want. Uh, personally, I prefer it like this. Do we have the commands on the right and the uh, viewing window on the left? Uh, all right, now we can uh, move around with the arrow keys, uh, take a look at our lovely land. And uh, as you remember, we did have a river here, but we cannot see it right now because it's winter. If you use the uh, greater than or lesser than keys or uh, shift uh, period and comma, uh, pyramid goes down, comma goes up. You can cycle through the layers. There's our water right there. And, uh, oh, wait, the river was on the left, wasn't it? Whoops. All right, let's take a look. Yes, there is our river. Ah, so it's actually a pretty high river. And what is this? Brook. Oh, it's a brook. So it's not even a river. It's just a brook. Oh, okay, so we won't get too much good fishing from that, but that's okay. We didn't bring any fish dwarves any with us anyway. All right, now that we've checked that out, and if you want to take a look at anything in the background here, you just hit K, which is the uh, pretty much the view, whatever is under the cursor button. We got uh, some stuff in the wall here. Ah, I see right down here we have some uh, fire clay. That's useful. I could probably dig it out there. Let me scroll up, see where that... Ah, here's our dirt. Fire clay. So a good portion of this is all dirt. So I'm going to want to build my farms up here. So that we'll have uh, easier access to it. Because if I didn't build uh, farms in dirt, then I would need to irrigate the uh, 
rock that I'm in, which is a bit more of a pain to do. Alright, so now that we're here, we need to start getting our dwarves working. Uh, first thing I want to do is hit D for designate. This is where we can mine, uh, tell them to chop down trees, gather plants and such like that, build stairways inside rock. Uh, when you have to build a stairway in blank space like this, an up and a downward stairway, you have to use uh, the build menu. Uh, but for doing anything inside rock, you use the designate menu. Right now we're going to chop down some trees by hitting uh, designate and then t, t for trees. Enter in one, you can see the little flashing uh, square there, and then enter in the next corner. Right up about here. And they will now go and cut down all those trees. Uh, same way, uh, designate and then D for mine. We'll get our miners to work. Gonna want to make a uh, oh, let's make a fairly wide area here. Let's say about this is about four wide. And then we'll go inward about yay far. And I'll make a smaller route up here. This is where I'm gonna dig up and into the uh, actual farm. So I want to get the farm done as soon as I can. Because that's the main thing you want to get built first. So in order to uh, get up there, I need to build a stairway. If I was considering I'm going up here, I want to build an upward stairway with you. Go from one point to another, and now this is an upward stairway. Now there's nothing connecting from that to, or to that from the next level, so it won't actually go anywhere. And since you want to go up two levels, I'm going to put a up-down stairway because we still want to go up from here. In between that upward stairway and the downward stairway I'm gonna put above it. That is I for up down stairway and J for just down stairway. And then on the last level above that I'm gonna put a downward stairway. Alright, now once they get up here I want them to start digging. It'll be a big old room right here and this is gonna be where our farm is. It's gonna be quite a large, f well actually that is, that is far far too large. We don't, we don't need a farm that quite not even nearly that large to begin with all right that should be more than big enough right now all right so they will get to work on that and I'm also gonna want them to start moving all this stuff to a temporary stockpile before I uh, before I do much else as well as building some more uh, stuff in here so let me uh, this will be their uh, actual meeting hall here temporary meeting hall till I dig down deeper should be good. I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger than that. Because it may take a while to expand out into the new area. And then down here, I'm going to build what will be the uh, temporary indoor storage. Because we want to get all this uh, all this stock indoors, because there are animals that will steal. And if I make a mistake, like say, oh, this, I don't really want that, I'm going to X to remove designation, and it will remove it. All right. But for right now, we need a stockpile outside here so they can start uh, hauling everything there. In order to build a stockpile, you need to hit P for stockpile. And uh, we want to make sure to custom everything stockpile. So we're going to hit C for custom stockpile. And then T for settings. And we want to go down and enable animals, food, furniture. We do not want to enable corpses, refuse, or stone. Ammo, coins, pretty much everything except coins, refuse, and stone you want to enable. All right. And you want to add some reserve barrels with the, uh, you can see the keys right here. Whoops, if it'll actually do it. There we go. About, oh, I'll say 10 reserve barrels for now. Alright, now we're going to want to just place it, uh, let's say roughly right about here. That'll be good enough. And uh, we also want to get our chickens in place so they can start making eggs and giving us our delicious food. Uh, in order to do that, we need to, well, we don't actually need to put a zone, put them in a zone or put them in a pen, but I like to do it just to restrict them to an area so they aren't running away and they're just sitting there and laying their eggs. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to hit I for zones, and then just build a little zone right over here works. And once that's done, you hit N to turn it into a pasture, and then capital N to uh, pen animals in there. We're going to pen all the hens, the rooster, the duck, and the drake there. And we also have some yak bulls, and uh, these are also grazing animals. Now for them, we need to make them a pen somewhere where there is grass, otherwise they'll starve to death. Uh, so we're going to do that in a moment here. Make another one over here. Uh, that's right about here. Make it slightly larger for them. That's about good. Make it a pen. 
Put the yak bulls in there. And they're both bulls, so once as soon as I get a butcher up, I'd want to slaughter them because they're both males. They're useless to us uh, for anything other than quick meat. So that would be a good idea if you get a butcher as well right off the bat. Um, all right. Now I'm just going to... Actually, another thing I'm going to want to do is have to build those nest boxes so they'll start laying the eggs. To do that, I need to go to the build menu, which is uh, B. And then I can just scroll up using the uh, plus and negative keys. And there we go, or capital N would also work as well. Nest box. Oh, I'll put one there. One there. One there, and one there. And now they'll start laying eggs in there whenever they uh, feel like it. So that's a good start. And now we need them to start getting some materials. So we're going to hit space and let them resume and start doing their job. As you can see, they're working really fast. Getting a lot of stuff done. I'm also going to hit Q, which is the uh, set buildings tasks preferences, and I'm going to hit X to remove this wagon, so whenever my carpenter has a spare moment, he will destroy the wagon. Alright, so that's working well. Now, if you happen to get lost anywhere on the map, like you're over here and like, oh no, where's the wagon? I can't find it. You can hit F1, it will take you right back to where, you, where the wagon is, or where it was, even if you destroy it. Alright, he's cutting down some trees, they're hauling everything in there, that's good. Now, speaking of the uh, birds and such that steal all your goods, you can actually check for that if you hit U, which is the units list. You can see all your dwarves, all your pets slash livestock. And here are the others, ravens. So yes, ravens do like to steal items. So it is possible that they will come over my uh, stocks and start stealing everything. Uh, hopefully they don't, but you never know. Alright, so they're digging that out slowly. They're getting their jobs done. Hopefully they get up to that fairly quickly so we can start digging out the uh, farm plot. Because if you can get if you can get farm plots built and planted within the first five minutes, you're golden. You're pretty you're pretty much set for life right there. Or at least until your uh, next couple uh, migrant waves come in. Ah, looks like there was a uh, little patch underneath the uh, underneath all the snow there. But now that we do have all these materials to build with, we're going to want to get some uh, quick uh, workshops up. So we can start building some stuff. In order to do that, we want to go B for build and then W for workshops. Now here we have the various types of workshops. Uh, bowers, clothers, carpenters, uh, so on. Right now we just want the carpenter's workshop. I'll build that out of the uh, ore from the wall because it's pretty cheap. Uh, we're going to want the mason's workshop. And we're going to be building with the uh, logs, so we don't really want to use that if we uh, don't have to. And a mechanics workshop in case we need some mechanisms. Which we usually do right off the bat. Schist. There we go. It's an odd material named schist. But anyway. Alright. They're chopping wood. They're digging through the dirt here. Through the rock and getting their jobs done. In a few moments they will reach the stairs. And they'll start digging them out and heading up top. And then we can start getting stuff uh, really built. Alright. You can see these little... Uh, if I pause it here with space. You can see these little pyramid-like structures right outside the base. Now, these are ramps, and uh, any, any enemy that happens to be above, right above the ramp here can just come straight on down into the fortress. So any walls we build around this area here would be completely useless until we get rid of these ramps. Uh, to do that, we need to go back to the designations menu, D, and then uh, Z, remove upstairs slash ramps. Then we just need to go one corner and another corner, and all of this will be removed. Once the miners aren't actually busy, that is. So whenever they got to spare some spare time, they will come out here and they will start digging all this up, and it will keep our fortress a lot safer. All right, so they're digging all that up. That's good. Now that we have these built, we're going to want to start uh, building some beds and stuff. Uh, we're going to want to build seven beds, one for each. And we're also going to want to go to our mason and start building uh, some tables. Three tables, three chairs, roughly. We, don't, we could probably build more than that. And get some rock mechanisms made. It's always good to have a uh, small supply of uh, mechanisms and such as well. But mostly we do need the tables and the beds for our meeting hall. So our dwarves can eat, drink, and sleep, their, uh, sleep the night away. We're going to expand this section a little bit. I'd say about too wide. want a really big meeting hall. All right, they're almost made it to the stairs. Once they get up there and start digging out the farm, we can have them start digging out this uh, extra indoor storage and meeting hall. But the farm gets absolute priority. 
Looks like he struck some gems there, so we could dig those out if we want to. And now they're in the dirt, so this will this will be a lot faster. They'll have this dug out in no time. Oh, looks like they're going down to uh, work on the rest of the hallway first. Oh, and winter is over, it seems, or we're getting close to it. Spring is on the way. So these dwarves need to get moving and uh, get these farms built. Well, actually, no, they don't build the farms. They just dig out the area, but still. Can't build the farm plots until they dig out the area. Oh, so you can see those ravens just flashed by there a moment ago. Alright, that's enough space to build my first plot. So in order to build your farm plot, you need to hit B for build, and then P for farm plot. There we go. And build, I, like a, I like a 4x4 farm plot. It's really nice. I want to build one there. And resume while they uh, continue their work. So now my farmer should get over here. Ah, yes, and one thing I did forget to mention is uh, once you actually launch the game, you're going to want to load up the Dwarf Therapist. And uh, reconnect to Dwarf Fortress, read Dwarves. Haha! -ha. You're going to want to find your miners and disable all of their hauling jobs as soon as you can. Because we don't want them hauling right, right now. We want them doing nothing but mining. That is their only job right now. That is all they're supposed to do is just keep mining, keep mining. Oh, wait, that's not him. It's not the miner. It's one below. Alright, so we'll disable all their mining. Or all, no, all their hauling. And now they'll just be mining. Alright, look at them go. Speedy little dwarves. Alright, now that he's here. Gonna want to build another. There we go. Another sizable farm plot. Once these guys finish digging these out, I'm also going to build a still workshop. Which is where we uh, brew our beer in Dwarf Fortress. And uh, dwarves really need their beer, so they, uh, they we're going to get that. We're going to provide that for them by hitting B for build, W for workshop, uh, scroll up with the negative key, or you could also hit uh, L for the still. And we're going to put it. Oh, let's put it right here. It's a bit away from the door. All right. And since my uh, farmer here is actually also my uh, brew, <coughs> excuse me, my brewer, I'm going to want to give somebody else. Uh, that job so he can stick on just nothing but brewing so I'm gonna disable my hunter right now I'm going to give him brewing and I'm gonna disable brewing on the uh, on the farmer so he can just get farming get all the crops planted and uh, get stuff going now he's still not gonna do anything with these farm plots till we tell him what to build or what to what to plant uh, in order to do that we need to hit Q which is the set buildings tasks preferences and uh, select the uh, field as you can see here uh, now it's A for spring, and to begin with, we just want plump helmets. We just want nothing but plump helmets so we can start producing beer and food and whatnot. D for winter, so you want to go A, B, C, and D, and then set them all to plump helmets. Same thing for this farm plot once it's built. It's going to be nothing but uh, plump helmets for this uh, for right now. Then later on, you're definitely going to want to, especially with the new uh, update, uh, for summer and autumn, build some pigtails so you can get some fibers to build clothes for your clothing industry. But anyway, those farm plots are now set up. They're ready to go. You're good now. You're, it's done before the first uh, the first season or first month went by. So right now, this is a really good setup. He's getting the uh, brewery built. But he won't actually brew any beer unless he has a vessel to store it in. And also, they're not doing any work now because I forgot to designate out uh, the meeting hall, to be mind. So they're going to do that now. Ooh, and actually I need to remove this bit. So again, I'm going to use X to undesignate this area. D to redesignate this, because I do want a hallway to continue this way. So I can start digging down in this direction. Alright. So they'll get to work on that now. And then afterwards I can start working on the meeting hall. But as you can see, while they didn't have any work uh, I specifically set them to, they took care of the ramps. Uh, looks like he finished the beds. And now... In order for them to make beer, we need some kind of container to have to hold the beer in. Easiest one, if you have a lot of trees like I do in this area, is to go to your carpenter shop right here. Uh, using the same thing, Q, A for add new task. And then V for uh, barrel. And then we want this. We want them to keep making barrels. We could we could only uh, give them ten uh, build orders here. Or we could just tell them to repeat the order with R. And then we'll just keep building barrels. Which means more delicious beer for your dwarves. Okay. Now, once they get the meeting hall here all dug out, uh, at least partially, I can uh, start uh, getting stuff done. 
Now, as you can see, it is leaving a lot of debris everywhere. These are all the rocks they're going to gather and build stuff with. And uh, we could actually hide these from our site by going D, B, and then H, hide items, buildings. And then we could select just a whole swath of them and they would disappear. Uh, but you could also use, if I go capital H to remove that, you could also use a different uh, type of uh, moving it around, which is called quantum dumping. Uh, basically, you want to create a garbage dump by hitting I for zones, like we did for the animals, and create it, oh, right here in the hallway, I'd say. Enter, enter, just a one space uh, block, and you're going to make hit G for garbage dump. Then you want to hit D, B, and D for dump items, and select all this, and they will dump it all into that little one, one space zone. So whoever's idle is now going to get to work and start hauling all that stuff to that zone. See right there? He's moving it right in the, into the spot. That's a smart dwarf. Now, another thing we're going to want to get up, set up right away as fast as we can is a record keeper. And if we take a look at our status page, the Z, we can see we have roughly 200 food stores, roughly 60 seeds. We're not really sure exactly how much we of what we have uh, left. We, have, we know we have 10 plants, there's that. So we know we have that, but everything else we're not really sure what we got. A record keeper will help us uh, sort this out and figure out exactly what we have. Uh, likewise, for if you enter right now, you'll go to the animals, you can see what we have right here for... for um, Dwarves, but anyway, if you enter, it'll show us our animal screen, which has our all animals. And like I mentioned before, when you're slaughtering the bull cows and whatnot, uh, once you have a uh, butcher shop and someone who can actually butcher, you go to this screen again, Z, and then enter for this, and you assign them to be slaughtered by hitting B, like that, ready for slaughter. Now, if I had a butcher, I'd probably get that done, and we'd have some delicious meat to hold us off. That's a good way to uh, get some meat rate right, uh, at the beginning. Uh, but for now, we're going to let them be. Uh, next one is the kitchen. Here's all the things that we're cooking, drinking, and eating, and whatnot. Uh, now, right off the bat here, since we will have a lot of hen eggs and duck eggs to hold us off food-wise, I'm going to want to temporarily remove uh, plump helmets from the cook schedule. Uh, so they will not cook plump helmets. They'll just keep uh, gathering up so we can use them for brewing, which is good. So there we go. That's set up. Now, stone, we can see all the various stones we have available to us and what they can make. Stocks, this will show a much more detailed... Uh, chart of what would exactly we have uh, but anyway let's get out of that for now so let me continue here let them do their job they're getting it done pretty quickly that's good I'm gonna have them dump the rest of this get it out of sight out of mind and now I also go B for build T for table so you get some tables built C for chair Oops, that's the wrong button. There we go. So then we'll get those done. I'm going to start putting beds in the corner here. Alright. Now I'm going to let them go and continue what they were doing. So we'll resume. They'll start placing all that stuff in there. Alright. Alright. So I'll open up this room now. Dwarves are unable to complete the bed. Apparently we're getting a lot of alerts. So in order to figure out what exactly they're saying, we can hit A for alerts and see exactly what the issues were. Uh, looks like they were unable to complete bed for some reason. Lost item, item lost or destroyed. Ah, it's probably all the stuff I've been dumping right now. So they no longer have access to those materials, so they're stopping the uh, construction of them. Alright, so that's perfectly fine for now. And uh, once you've actually dumped it to that area, you can reclaim it by hitting D, B, and then C to reclaim items. And then just double click on that. And they'll now use those items that they uh, have been forbidden to use because it was put in the garbage dump. Oh, it looks like they actually did not put the tables in place. At all. Ah, that's what their problem was. So they lost the beds, possibly. No access to a bed. Alright. Gonna resume. They should hopefully start dragging those beds over here properly and everything. Get all those tables into place. 
If we go up now, we should be producing barrels. So I'm going to go Q and have him start brewing. Repeat, on repeat. We need to just always brew some beer constantly. All right. They haven't gotten those tables in place. They're getting the beds in place quickly. Now, we may as well set up our bedrooms first since the beds are in place. So we hit Q and then R to make a bedroom. We want to extend this out a little bit. That should be good. And then we want to hit enter and then make it a dormitory. And you expand it with the plus and negative keys. That way they'll all to go there and start napping and whatnot whenever they need to. You can see the table. There we go. He's finally going to get a table in place. That's what we need right now to set up our... Uh... There we go. It's one table in place. But now we can finally start setting up our uh, record keeper. Because he needs a chair and a table to actually uh, get his job done. Alright, so we're going to Q. Whoop, that's not Q. This is Q. And go on to the chair, not the table, the chair. And then R for make uh, throne room or study, because we need a study. We can just shrink it down to a small area here. Enter. Now, we want to assign this to somebody. Now, in order to figure out who has any record keeping skill, we'd load up the dwarf therapist, uh, go to social, and take a look at record keeping, see if they had the skill. Now, none of my dwarves actually have any record keeping skill whatsoever. So we're going to want to just assign someone that's not really that useful right now. So I'm going to assign uh, Stukos, my uh, former hunter who is now the brewer. I'm also going to disable his uh, wood hauling. Item hauling I'll leave and food hauling just so that he can haul around uh, the barrels and such he needs for uh, alcohol production. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to commit those changes. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to assign the chair to him even though I haven't given him the job yet. Alright, now in order to make him a record keeper, you have to go to the noble screen, which is N. And here we can see our expedition leader, our militia commander, if we have one, our sheriff who deals out the law, hammer who smashes people in the face if they disobey the law. We got our manager who will allow us to queue up uh, production orders of like 30 barrels or 20 uh, iron swords or something like that, uh, which I usually turn the bookkeeper into as well. We have our chief medical dwarf, obviously what he does. Our broker, which is the one that trades with uh, other civilizations. Uh, now the broker you're going to want to have to have appraisal and negotiating, but especially appraisal. Because if, really, if you don't have appraisal, you can't tell the value of items and it makes it really hard to trade. And here we have our bookkeeper. So we want to assign him to bookkeeping, Stokos Hunter. Congratulations, bookkeeper. And before we leave this menu, we're going to want to go into settings and set all counts to be accurate. So he will keep all counts as accurate as possible. Alright, and now he should be able to uh, get everything done there. I'm going to want to build some more tables and chairs. Oh, we're out of tables. Do we have any chairs? We do. Okay, we're going to want to make this into our meeting hall so we can have all our dwarves meet and drink here. In order to do that, we need to select the actual dining table instead of the chair this time. We'll expand this out. Uh, it's perfectly fine if they overlap with the uh, bedroom. Enter, and then make it a meeting hall, H. And now this is a meeting hall. All those animals, if we haven't uh, set any up yet, like the dogs and the cats, will now go to that meeting hall. Oh no, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining cats. Yes, it is. It's raining cats. Well, no, anyway. <laughs> All right. Now. Oh, what is this? That suddenly popped up out of nowhere. A downward slope. Now, that downward slope wasn't there before. Huh. How mysterious. Oh, I see. I, I didn't check below, and there was a... Uh, oh, that was my mistake. There was an actual pond right underneath where I built the workshops. So once the uh, once everything thawed out, the workshops were destroyed, and everything that was in the workshops fell down here. Luckily, we didn't lose any dwarves down there that I can see. Nobody's died. That would have been a that would have been a terrible, terrible situation there. But that's the that's the fun of dwarf fortress. Sometimes just crazy stuff happens. Uh, but anyway, now would be uh, a good time to start uh, digging down. So I want to build a downward stairway, J, and I like to set up and I like to set up column-like uh, structures when I'm digging down. Hit I for up, down stairway, because we're gonna just keep going down, keep going down. We'll go down. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three. I'll go down about three, and then one more with an upward stairway to connect to that. 
There we go. Now when they get some time, they will build that stairway. We can start to actually building down there. And uh, once they get this dug out, we can set up our uh, new stockpile inside, get everything quickly moved inside. But let me rebuild a uh, mason's workshop so we can get some more tables and such built. Where are you, Mason? And I'm also going to set up a butcher shop outside to get those cows butchered. Ortho clays, Mason's workshop. All right. Now, we don't have a butcher either, so let me load up the therapist, see who's not really doing too much right now. Uh, carpenter, he is. The woodcutter, on the other hand. Although he is also a crafter, I'm going to temporarily give him butchery. So he will do that, set that up, and then we can start getting some delicious meat off those cows. Or yaks, as it were. Alright. I definitely want to make a bigger stockpile than that. Ah, uh, but no, that would be fine for now, actually. Remove those designations. Resume. Alright. Now, I didn't really want them to dig that out yet, but they're already going to do it, it seems. Looks like we're finding some good materials down there. Just found some uh, silver, or no, Galena. Silver looks just the same as this. We have some gems and whatnot. So there are a lot of really good materials in this embark. Alright, so he's almost done this. Oh, no, he's going to work down there. <laughs> Lols. Oh, dwarves, dwarves. Alright, Mason's Workshop. Construct some thrones, construct some tables, and get to work. Now, we'd also want to build a trade depot with uh, B and then capital D, so that when we do get a trade caravan coming in, which usually happens pretty quickly, we'll have some stuff to trade in. We just found some marble, which is a flux stone, so uh, flux stone probably isn't showing up properly in this version of it that I have from the Lazy New Pack, but hopefully there'll be a better uh, updated version soon for it. Alright, he's building that. Let's see, is the butcher shop. The butcher shop has been done. So now that the butcher shop is done, I'm going to have those butcher, those uh, yaks butchered. So I'm going to go to Z for my status page, enter into animals. And I'm going to go B on both of these, so they'll both be butchered. So they are now ready for the slaughter. As long as I have barrels being produced, which I should probably build another carpenter's workshop and have them produce more. Oops, I passed right by it. Carpenter's Workshop, there we go. Marble, no, I want to keep marble because that is a flux stone. So I can actually get that early steel industry if I had kept the anvil. Uh, but I didn't, so that would have actually been a good idea to keep the anvil now. But I can always trade for it with the next caravan. As you can see, he just slaughtered that and he started putting his uh, meat into a barrel. If you uh, need to check what's in, a, what's in a workshop, you can hit T and see what they have in here. Right here we can see we have yak fat, we have uh, cartilage, prepared yak long heart, and everything else that was made from the yak, yak. sweet bread, uh, tripe, everything. Ah, but yes, another workshop we're going to want to get built uh, pretty quickly is, uh, let me hit B here, build, workshop. We're going to want to have a kitchen so we can start making some simple meals. Just good, simple meals. Alright, so he's going to make that. And that should be good for now. Resume. But since we do have a crafter in this, we would also want to build a craft dwarf uh, workshop. But a lot of this you really want to build indoors so you can uh, don't have to bother moving this in later. But he's almost done this inner stockpile here, so that will be pretty much that's pretty much our goals. Our three main goals when we first start up a fortress are to get an inner stockpile done as quick as possible, have a temporary one outdoors, uh, get our meeting hall built, but our number one priority is to get this farm built, at least two plots, and uh, if you can, get it done in soil. If you can't, you have to, uh, say this is rock, right here, like uh, say I tunneled down from here, per se, build a little room in here, like so. I wouldn't build that like that, close to the thing. Uh, oh, that looks odd. All right. Now, if I wanted, if this was all rock, I would have to uh, flood it in order to, or irrigate it in order to uh, be able to plant in it. To do that, I would uh, build a room similar to this. I would build two doors to block off the entrance, and a lever which requires uh, three mechanisms: one for the lever, two to hook it up, as well as a floodgate. Now, once they've mined this out, you want to get them to build the floodgate right about here. 
And uh, hopefully they won't get stuck. They shouldn't when it's like this. And uh, then hook it up to the trap lever. Uh, once that's done, you want to uh, hit Q and uh, add task, pull the lever with capital P, and the floodgate will go down. You can then send your dwarf in to finish mining this out, and the area will start flooding as he runs away. Now, it shouldn't, as long as they don't go through the door, it will not go past the door, it will hold the water in. And once this area has been flooded to about one or two uh, depth of, uh, of water, then you can actually start... Uh, flipping the lever again, which will shut off the floodgate and uh, close it off so that they uh, doesn't keep going. Because anything, anything higher than two or one won't evaporate. But once it does, you'll have a muddy soil and you'll be able to actually start putting some farm plots down. It takes a bit longer, but it's something that needs to be done. Anyway, let me go down now. Alright. So, they're getting everything done there. The trade depot is almost done. And uh, that's pretty much everything there. Once we get the uh, stockpile done indoors here, P, which we should probably do now. Now we could go and make the custom stockpile settings again, or we could just place it down like so. It's in there, and hit Q, S, and then go down and just enable everything. There, except for stone, corpses, and refuse. And actually, we would want to get another stockpile as well outside just for corpses and refuse. I'm going to make a temporary one right here and uh, go Q, settings, disable animals, we want just corpses and refuse there. Now another good idea would be to go up to your farm and uh, build another small stockpile right over here for food. So I'm going to F for uh, food and build that stockpile right about here. It's pretty. That's actually a pretty large stockpile. I don't really need it that large, but it'll be fine. Then we go into the settings for the stockpile and go down to the food, and uh, we want to hit F to forbid everything except for seeds and leaves. Oh, and plants. Plants we want to. Where were those plants? There's the plants. Plants we do want to hit P to permit plants. So they will store all of our plants, all of our seeds here, and we want to go down and disable them from our uh, everything stockpile. So that all the seeds will go right next to the farm, they don't have to run through half the fort to get to the seeds. So I'm going to forbid all seeds and plants from there. Alright, let's resume. Alright, first things first, now that we have that done, we're going to hit P for uh, stockpile, and then X to remove stockpile. Even though I think they already, it already removed the stockpile because it was temporarily destroyed from the uh, water. <laughs> anyway, now they will start hauling all of that stuff indoors. So none of these uh, evil ravens and such we can... Well, there are no more ravens. We do have mountain goats, though, which actually are really good hunting. So now I would actually like to put my hunter back on the job. But he's busy right now. But yeah, that is basically how you want to uh, quick start uh, Dwarf Fortress. We have our stockpiles all set up. We have our meeting hall for our dwarves to eat and drink and uh, take breaks. We got our uh, farm here all set up and ready to go so they can uh, plant and keep our food supplies and beer supplies going. We have a beer production going, or it looks like he stopped because he didn't have enough uh, barrels. Uh, remember, keep producing barrels, keep producing barrels, keep cutting down trees. And uh, just keep everything going, and you'll have a good, successful start. Anyway, this has been Silver Dragon from CubeTubers.com. I will probably build some uh, or do some additional videos uh, to expand on, like the military and some additional aspects of Dwarf Fortress. If you guys, uh, is there anything specific you guys want to see in any further videos? Let me know. Uh, put your comments down on the page. Uh, until then, Silver Dragon signing out, and uh, see you all next time.